The reading today comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 26. You have heard that our ancestors were told, you must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, you are in danger of being brought before the court. And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. So if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple, and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. When you're on the way to court with your adversary, settle your differences quickly. Otherwise, your accuser may hand you over to the judge. Who will hand you over to an officer and you will be thrown into prison? And if that happens, you surely won't be free again until you have paid the last penny. This is the word of the Lord. Well, good morning. What a beautiful morning it is. I wanted to uh, say congratulations to Jackson. Stand up, Jackson. How many of you saw Jackson in the one-act play at Central High School? He was amazing. Awesome. And they went on to state competition and won a superior for the 16th, in a row. 16th year in a row. And what, a, what an accomplishment. You know, when God is at work among us, it is so touching. Touching when we see God work in the lives of our people. This morning I was up early. I love it because the sun comes up earlier and earlier. Uh, I have to admit, in a couple weeks when it's daylight savings time, I'll go into mourning because I love the morning, the morning sun. And uh, this morning as I was driving to church, the sun was rising over the dinosaur ridge. And I just thought, man, Lord, this is the best, the best day ever. So welcome to worship. This morning, oh, we've got a difficult, difficult topic. Anger, the good and the bad. Will you pray with me? Lord, open our hearts this morning. May your Holy Spirit draw us into your presence. May we see Jesus. May we feel Jesus. May Jesus walk with us. Lord, I pray that the words that I share this day will be lifted up with honor and with glory to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've been with us the last few weeks, we've been on a journey. My brother and I, some seven years ago, were in Israel. And uh, if you'd put up that first picture. In Israel, we talked about what it means to walk with God. And I use this picture in the first part of my messages. It's from the Mount of Beatitudes. And these messages are coming from Matthew, the fifth chapter. And it's Jesus teaching us. And the famous words from the Mount of Beatitudes is, Blessed are the poor, the meek. Jesus teaches us that life is about the attitudes of our hearts. How do we see others? What eyes do we see others with? Last week, we talked about salt and light. How we are to be the salt and the light. How we must reflect God to all those around us. Today, we hear Jesus' words about the attitudes and the actions of our lives. Jesus teaches us about the rules of conduct. How many of you like rules? Not a single, oh, a couple teachers out there, maybe. <laughs> rules. When I was a young person, rules were meant to be broken. I was a challenger. And I paid the price many times. Jesus teaches us about the rules of conduct in the kingdom of God. What does it look like to live as a Christian. Now, I'm dating myself a little bit here. Yes, I am old. 
Yes, I remember the 1970s. How many of you can go back that far? Okay. How many of you remember something called a mood ring? How many of you had a mood ring? Some of you can remember that. They were a big fad back in the 70s. They were especially popular with the girls, with the ladies. The theory behind the mood ring was that body heat fluctuates as the emotional state of the wearer changes. And the ring was attuned to the body's temperature. Now, none of this was ever established scientifically, but like most fads, it provided some fun for people, especially comedians and cartoons. Example is 1976. Peanuts comic strip, Peppermint Patty got so angry with Charlie Brown that her mood ring explodes. Now that's a bad mood. Another example of the mood ring humor concerns a woman who reported that her husband was unhappy with her mood swings. So he bought her a mood ring. He hoped he would be able to monitor her moods and prepare himself accordingly. Well, it worked. He discovered that when she was in a good mood, the ring turned green. And when she was in a bad mood, the ring left a great big red mark on his forehead. <laughs> Maybe next time, she said, he'll buy me a diamond ring. We joke about moods, don't we? Are you in a good mood? Are you in a bad mood? Are you angry? Are you sad? Are you happy? Everybody goes through a series of emotions, moods, at some time or another in their lives. What we do during those times is a matter of what is in our Jesus said, you've heard that the law of Moses says, do not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. No, I don't like that. I'm not a murderer, but I do get angry. And Jesus said that the attitudes are the same, can be the same. We cannot hold our anger in our hearts and not sin against God. Did you hear that? I prayed about that a lot this week. We cannot hold anger in our hearts and not sin against God. Jesus calls us to be inward looking, not outward when these emotions come. The laws of Moses given by God were called the Ten Commandments. Do not murder is the Sixth Commandment. I never got through the first two. I failed those every time. Jesus takes God's commandments a step farther. And He said, anger even anger is a sin if you are, don't take the proper action. Jesus is calling us to a higher standard. If we have the love of Christ in us, we're to reflect Christ's love. Paul in his letter to the Ephesians writes in Ephesians 4, In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Hear that all the time, don't we? Do we ever obey it? Do you ever kneel at the foot of your bed and, and say, Lord, forgive me. Take this anger from me. I don't remember a, a night in 44 years that Deb and I have ever went to bed angry. I remember sleeping in the other room but it was never because we were angry. Jesus doesn't claim that all anger is sinful. 
But most anger leads to a selfish desire. You think about that? When you're angry, what happens? It's all about me when I'm angry. I want, I, I, I. Not thinking about others. Because the outward act always begins with an inward emotion. Jesus said if we're filled with anger and hate, we all have the potential potential to become murderers. It's a bit scary, isn't it? Anger unchecked. Anger, anger out of, of the emotion of the heart can lead to sinful, sinful things. There are judgments and consequences for anger, for holding on to it and not giving it away. So Jesus sheds a new light on the emotion and moods that develop within us. So how can we deal with anger in a constructive way? Well, Jesus shows us the example of a righteous anger, an anger directed at an unjustice or unrighteous act towards someone else in Matthew 21, 12. Jesus overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, He said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. Interesting, isn't it? The things of life can make us so angry that our anger often is not a righteous anger. Jesus hated that they were selling indulgences in the temple. If you got the next picture. When my brother and I were in Israel, this is the streets of old Jerusalem. There isn't a square inch that they aren't selling something. My brother and I said, Jesus really sells in Israel. And the anger that Jesus felt was over the injustices done to the poor. Those who needed to buy a sacrifice. Jesus saw the injustice and it was a righteous anger. How many times do I get angry and I say, oh Lord, it is a righteous anger. When no, it's all about me. I've been hurt. I didn't like this. I didn't like that. I, I didn't get my way and now I am angry. It's not a righteous anger. Jesus showed us the love that comes from a righteous anger. How do we deal with others who bring out the worst in us? Anger becomes a sin when it's self-centered. Matthew 5.22 said, If you call someone an idiot, I like this translation, I get that, you are in danger of being brought before the high council. And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. You know what? I think as a mission we should raise enough money to buy an airplane and paint those words over Washington, D.C. And I think we should fly it every day until Jesus returns. You know, it's time for us to understand that we need to be civil to one another, that we need to love one another even if I don't agree with you. Did you know that I don't agree with my wife all the time? Hard to believe she's such a wonderful person. But how can we love and still disagree? Jesus said, you must. It's a commandment that I give you. So how do we deal with others who bring out the worst in us? There's everyone, isn't there? We all have that person or person that just rubs us the wrong way. Well, there's a simple little book that's become very popular. It's entitled The Law of the Garbage Truck. How many of you have heard of it? Oh, we need to get that book, don't we? 
How to respond to people who dump on you. And how to stop dumping on others. 20 years ago, David Pole, a keynote speaker and psychologist, narrowly, narrowly escaped a life-threatening automobile accident when a car without warning plowed into the taxi in which he was riding. The driver of the other car, who was definitely at fault, shouted obscenities at the taxi driver. However, the taxi driver simply smiled and waved, the, waved at the obscenity-shouting man and wished him well. Mr. Pollet was impressed and asked why he had done this, and the taxi driver explained, Many people are like garbage trucks. They run around full of garbage, full of frustration, full of anger, full of disappointment. And as their garbage piles up, they look for a place to dump it. And if you let them, they'll dump it on you. So when someone wants to dump on you, don't take it personally. Just smile, wish them well, and move on. Believe me, you'll be happier. In his book, Mr. Pollet says, what about you? What would happen in your life starting today if you let more garbage trucks pass you by? Here's my bet, he said. I bet that you'll be happier. Simple, isn't it? Just let it go. Isn't that a movie? Jesus said, don't let your anger consume you. You see, it's not about being right or wrong. Did you hear that? It's not about being right or wrong. It's about being reconciled. It's about forgiving. It's about restoring your relationship. It's about finding common ground and then loving in the love of Jesus Christ. Simple, but profound but we cannot do it of our own strength. We need the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The third picture. This picture is from the Sea of Galilee, and it's looking at what's called Peter's primacy. On the Sea of Galilee, Jesus spent many, many, many hours with the disciples. And in this very spot along the shores of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus brought the disciples after the resurrection. He brought them there, and in this very place, He confronted Peter. You remember Peter? The guy that, that was bold, the guy that stuck his foot in his mouth all the time, the guy that was always in trouble. Fourth picture, please. Here in the garden at Peter's primacy, there is a church. And there's a beautiful statue where Jesus brought Peter and restored him. You remember the Scripture? Peter had denied Jesus. He'd walked away from Jesus the very moment that Jesus needed him the most. And in the garden, when the young maid came up, Peter said, I do not know him. Three times. He said, I do not know Jesus. Can you imagine Jesus' heart? He knew Peter was going to deny him. Peter had walked away. He had failed his Lord and Savior. In John 21, after breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter on the shore of Galilee, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said. You know I love you. Then take care of my sheep. Jesus said once more, he asked him, 
Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved that Jesus asked him the question a third time. And he said, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. And Jesus said, then feed my sheep. It's a profound story because Jesus chose to forgive Peter. How much more will Jesus forgive us our sins? Our Lenten study this year is entitled, Simon Peter, the Flawed but Faithful Disciple. There are at least four different studies out there in different times. Join us this Lenten season as we look at Peter and as we understand how Peter got it wrong so many times, but how he never failed his Lord and Savior. Join us for Peter, Simon Peter, flawed but faithful. In this very place, we had a profound moment with our group. There were 26 of us. Two of us were pastors. Our guide led us in a time of reconciliation. 24 of these people gathered around us as two pastors, and they laid our hands, their hands upon us. And they prayed that we might be the hands of God. That anger in us might be taken away. That love might fill our hearts. That no matter where we went and where we served, we would serve the risen Lord in the love of Jesus Christ. And anger and hatred would leave our hearts and our lives. It was a profound moment on that trip as we stood where Jesus forgave Peter. You know, I need forgiveness every day because I get it wrong. In thought and word and deed, I, I just I get it wrong. We all do. We all understand that in the emotions of life, we let anger take over and it's not a godly, righteous anger. It's a self-serving anger. And we need to be forgiven. And we need to forgive others. The question this morning is, do you need to get rid of the anger in your heart? Do you need to forgive? And do you need to seek forgiveness? Then like Peter, give everything to Jesus Christ. And then you will find peace. A peace that I can't explain because it doesn't come from a heavenly realm. Or it does come from a heavenly realm, not a worldly realm. The peace we look for is so very short-lived. It's a moment, but the peace of God that fills our hearts lasts for a lifetime. How do we do that? We prepare our hearts. We read the Scripture. The one-year Bible. How many of you got a one-year Bible? How many of you are reading? I don't care if you're caught up or not. Just stay with it. Well, I am a month ahead on mine. Because when I get to a place in my office where I need God... I stop and I read my one-year Bible. So you know I need God a lot, don't I? Be in God's Word. Be in prayer every morning, every day. Every day I come down West Ridge and I see the cross of the Catholic Church lit on the hill above Canyon Lake. How many of you know what I mean? It is beautiful and it's a reminder to me that bury your gods this day. And I pray that I will act like Christ each day. We're going to close today. I'm going to do something that most Methodist pastors never do. I'm going to give you an altar call. Simple. It's quiet. It's reflective. As the praise team comes to share the offering, I'm telling you, that I need prayer. And I'm going to kneel at the altar for a moment and ask God to take the anger from my heart that I might shine the light of Christ. I don't know who out there of you that may need a moment to come and just kneel and just say, Lord, walk with me.
take my anger. Forgive me and help me forgive others. Will you pray with me? Lord, I pray that we'll open our hearts to the presence of the Holy Spirit. I pray that in this moment, You will open us to Your forgiving love and to Your forgiving grace. Lord, as I kneel at the altar, I kneel before You, a sinner in need of forgiveness and love. Amen. Come, but for a moment, and kneel if you would like.